Okay, so we're going to have a look at making this. It's actually a Stirling engine that was designed by NASA and um, followed up by Thilla Blade, and this is just a replication of it. It's a simple one, so that it's uh, easy to do. It took me about an hour to make it from start to finish. It's missing a water jacket, and obviously a water jacket would improve it. So the rest of the video is going to be a demonstration of this thing working, then a step-by-step -step process of how to build it, and then finally another demonstration of it working. It's quite sensitive to the weight on top here, so you have to play around a little bit to get the weights right, and it won't start unless those weights are right. But when they're right, it'll begin to bulge, and you just give it a tap on the top to get it going. Now, <laughs> it is actually fairly violent, and um, these weights are just held on by a bit of glue and a magnet. So, when it's going, I'm going to stand like that in case they fly off. <laughs> Just wants to go in a second. And there it goes. Now, look at that go. That's amazing, actually. <laughs> okay, that's a very, very simple so machine. When I made that other Sterling type engine. I actually had to buy a fair few bits in order to make it, so I've got quite a few bits left over. This, for instance, I had to buy three of those in a pack, so I've got two more left over. And I also have an awful lot of these things, which are quarter litre tins. I have some ink in them, and that goes in there quite nicely. So I thought, I'll tell you what, let's make, get another Sterling engine out of it using a slightly different design. And that's what I'm about to do. So you need two canisters like that. A strip of metal, I got this from a toaster, it's just a piece of steel that's quite thin and quite bendy, so it's going to be easy to bend. I also had a whole load of rubber balloons, because of course I had to buy a load, and a M4 nut. So the first thing to do is to um, start working on this one. Now, that one needs a membrane over the top of it, with a fitting through it, to take this, and this will be bent into a U-shape. So that's the first thing that we're going to make, and you make that, by cutting up the rubber. So cut up the rubber balloon and stretch it over the head of your smaller can. And that is where that's going to go. Now, in order for that to work, it needs to be bent into a parabola because as that goes up and down, this is going to have to push in and out. So we make it so it will push in and out quite nicely. Now obviously, that's quite sharp, so all it'll actually do is saw through the rubber of this stage. We need to put something round there to stop it doing it. And you can either glue a bit of latex, a bit of balloon, or wrap it in electrician's tape. There's a lot of choices. So from the previous one, we have four of these. These are tap washers, and you get another one of them, put a little bit of crazy glue on it, and then in the center, pop it down, and leave it to dry. When it's dry, peel it back off, turn it around, and then the other side, add a little bit of crazy glue, and put your other tap washer on. While that's drying, you can prepare this. This is just a bit of acrylic, so it snaps out quite easily, and what we need to do is put a diaphragm on there. So take another balloon, snip it out, and stretch it over. Now take a bit of electrician's tape and go around it. There we go, it's finished. Put that to one side. When this is dry, poke a hole through it and attach your stirrup. So for pressure equalisation you need a tiny hole in this, and now we'll do it, just take a nail and whack it through the tin. And that'll do it, and you need to be able to keep that clear. Now you take 
your stirrup and attach the membrane on, making sure you get it in the centre again. Be careful to keep your hole clear that you just made. Once you're happy you've got it centred, fasten it down for a minute with an elastic band. When you're happy with it, take some tape and go around the side. Then trim it off as before. <clears throat> then check to make sure that your pressure equalisation hole is clear. And if it isn't, clear it. Now what we need to do is wrap it so that it's a smooth, tight-ish fit in there. And we do that with steel wool. Put a bit of crazy glue on to attach your steel wool. Now you need to be a bit careful with crazy glue because it'll stick everything, including you, to the can. Then all you do is wind your steel wool around. So the size of this is a tight fit in there. Now you will notice it's quite a tight fit it's a tight fit because of all these fluffy bits on it, so what we need to do is clean those fluffy bits off. And just like the last time, all we do is snip around it. So once you've got your displacer made and it's flowing in freely, you need to be able to hang it at about that distance, so you've got about the same above and below the displacer. And to do that, you need to bend the stirrup so that when the displacer moves up and down, the stirrup can go in and out of the displacer but also, when it's all attached on the head there, that diaphragm can also move so it doesn't hit the stirrup there. So you make the stirrup that kind of shape. Now you obviously have to fit the stirrup to the canister. And there's lots of ways of doing this. You can solder it on, you can glue it on, or like me, you can just clip it on. Because this canister has enough leeway that when I put that lid on, the displacer will be fixed quite nicely. Now, you can't just put the lid on, unfortunately, you have to preheat it. We're going to have to heat that up, and then when it's hot enough, put the lid on. When that lid goes on, the machine is near enough ready to run. But it works by adjusting weight, and you put a bit of steel on there so that you can add or take away weight. So I just so happen to have this thing, so I'm going to glue it on there, and then I'm going to use a near video magnet and use different lumps of steel to play around with the weights. So that's what I'm going to do now. So when it's had time to heat up and you've glued your uh, piece of metal on, it's time to put the lid on. Obviously you need to be careful because this will actually be quite hot and force that lid on over those clips and it's on. Now it's time to seal it up. And you seal it up just like you've been sealing it up all the time. A bit of electrician's tape and a little bit of care because it's red hot. <laughs> and that's it. Then leave it cool. As it cools, that will obviously go down. And there it is finished. And you pop it on to heat on. Heat up. Now. <laughs> I could actually wa watch this. <laughs> I could actually watch this all day long. So, hopefully, you found that interesting because I certainly did. And thank you very much for watching.